We come to an interview and our disability is readily apparent. They create a snap judgment. They saw a blind man walking in with a dog and two hearing aids and all they could think about was, how am I gonna get to my office every day? It's not an enabling word. And yeah, I'm blind and I'm fine saying I'm blind. And there are things I can't do, but I know what I can do. You need to be flexible and you need to be prepared to demonstrate your capabilities. Is it fair? Maybe not, but it's life. America is a country at work. It's our calling card, the land of opportunity, but not for everybody. A video montage of graphics and images depicts Americans at work. Among persons who are blind or visually impaired, the unemployment rate is about 70%. Images of people who are blind using canes. A graphic reading 70% appears. Now perhaps you're not surprised to hear that. After all, think about how often you use your sight. Could you find a way to do your job without it? Don't answer that question until you've seen this. An animated logo of the American Council of the Blind. A title, Blind Ability, Willing, Able, and Seeking Opportunity. An office nameplate reads Tony Stevens. Two men, one of whom is blind, meet around a table. Tony Stevens, Public Policy and Advocacy Manager, National Industries for the Blind. The biggest barrier, really, for people who are blind, and probably for people with all disabilities, but I know personally for people who are blind, is the misconceptions. I had several doors, not slammed in my face physically, but emotionally. These days, as public policy and advocacy manager for the National Industries for the Blind, you'll find Tony Stevens knocking on the doors on Capitol Hill. Tony and his guide dog navigate a sidewalk near the White House. Yes, it's a natural fit for Tony, but hardly the only job he is fit for, according to his boss. Rick Webster, Vice President, Public Policy, National Industries for the Blind. He is uh, very self-motivated. He's very productive. There's nothing that he can't do in the legislative and regulatory arena in terms of research, in terms of writing, communicating with people, advocating before Congress. Uh, he's terrific at his job. Tony could be doing this work on behalf of any interest group, any uh, constituency organization that's going to Capitol Hill. A dozen disability advocates, including Tony, meet around a large conference table. And what we try to do is bring in other people who are blind, who work at our nonprofits around the country, who have had similar experiences, who have had similar people tell them, you can't do this. It helps when we as people who are visually impaired are able to be able to say ourselves, we can do this. And that the misconceptions are just that, misconceptions. Tony and his guide dog access the metro and board a subway. A young woman who is blind walks with her guide dog, the start of her commute to the Department of Labor. Tiffany Jolliffe, Program Specialist, U.S. Department of Labor, Office of Disability Employment Policy. I think that people who are blind they, they aren't given the opportunity to really, to really shine and, and show off their skill sets that they, that they may have developed. For Tiffany Jolliffe, an internship at a disability lab allowed her to develop an understanding of providing accessible web content. That opened doors at the Department of Labor, first with another internship, and eventually with a post-college job in the Office of Disability Employment Policy. Tiffany arrives at the Office of Disability Employment Policy. I was so anxious to get her back here. I couldn't wait for an opening on my team. Colette Mitchell, Policy Advisor Team Lead, U.S. Department of Labor. We have an expedited hiring process, which is wonderful for people with disabilities, but it does not mean that you do not have to have the skills or qualifications. Tiffany resume went up to our HR department. She clearly had the skills and qualifications and was the best qualified for the opening. Tiffany uses headphones to listen to her emails then types responses. She has produced two blogs. She's working on our federal hiring initiative. Posters promoting hiring of persons with disabilities line the area. She's been a real value add to the entire team and she's the only millennial on our team. 
One thing that I really work on is with the Workforce Recruitment Program. I'm the employer team liaison to that. It's a federal program that creates a database of qualified students and recent graduates with disabilities who are looking for either federal or private sector employment. Tiffany and her guide dog head to a meeting in the assistant secretary's office. In order to be, like, to be asked to be a liaison to that program is is really fun for me because I get to see it from the other side and I get to potentially help someone else who was in my position find their road to employment. Tiffany and her guide dog navigate the plaza outside the Department of Labor building. A man with profound low vision and bilateral hearing impairment turns off lights in his home before departing for work. He commutes on the bus and the subway. I'm going to school for my master's degree, for a combined master's degree between UMass Medical School and Suffolk University. And even the other day, I had somebody to me say, well, how are you going to write a paper? Carl Richardson knows that the road to employment is rarely a straight path. Dealing with a progressive visual impairment and bilateral hearing loss takes creative thinking, strategy, and planning. Rather useful skills for the ADA coordinator at the Massachusetts State House, wouldn't you say? Carl Richardson, ADA coordinator, Massachusetts State House. I do have to constantly readjust, and even now have to readjust. My vision continually, continually progressively gets worse, and I have to always be open-minded about changing how I do things to get the job done. Messages, Tammy Cross, four minutes ago, sure. All right, good, we're covered. Carl is shown accessing emails and messages on his iPhone using the built-in voiceover feature. Before working with Carl Richardson, I hadn't had any experience working with anybody visually impaired. Tammy Krause, Superintendent, Bureau of the State House. We do a lot of projects in the building, and before, none of us had ever dealt with disabilities or none of us had disabilities. So now, as soon as we have a project that's starting, Carl's there from the beginning. Carl and his guide dog walk the halls of the State House. He describes upcoming renovations to a public hearing space. We'll have, not only will the stage be accessible, but we'll have the rostrum go up and down for people in wheelchairs so that height can be adjusted. In the design of Gardner Auditorium, I mean, Carl sees it in a different way than any of us would. Um, so he's able to tell us what a visually impaired person would need. He's able to help tell us what somebody in a wheelchair would need that we wouldn't think about. Carl used a video magnifier with color contrast to read letters and printed documents. Carl and his guide dog crossed the mosaic floor of the State House Rotunda. I get tremendous amount of satisfaction. I mean, not only does anybody get self work from getting up and getting going to work, but because of the uniqueness of my job in that I help other people with disabilities have access to government services, the legislature, the governor's office. It's an amazing thing. It is amazing what an opportunity can provide and how people can rise to the challenge. Carl and his guide dog climb the steps outside the State House. A woman who is blind meets in a co-worker's office, her guide dog at her feet. Rebecca Bridges, Human Capital Consultant, Federal Management Partners. When someone tells you that you can't do something. I think, you know, your initial reaction might be to sort of question yourself, but, um, you know, you dig deep and figure out that, you know, maybe the other reaction is, I'm gonna go do it anyway. And uh, I've always been a little bit feisty and stubborn. Rebecca and her guide dog descend the steps in front of her house on the way to work. Feisty and stubborn weren't the qualities that attracted the attention of Federal Management Partners, where Rebecca Bridges works as a management consultant. Rebecca walks the halls of her office. I do think her application stood out. She had some experience that was very relevant. We had Rebecca go through the same interview process that every other candidate would go through. Erin Patera, President, Federal Management Partners. I think did some accommodations on her writing assessment where she brought in her own computer and was fully able to do her writing assessment that we ask all candidates to do. At her desk, Rebecca listens to emails and types responses. I think that you have natural apprehensions when you haven't worked with someone that's blind and I think those, the apprehensions that we had was just making sure we communicated with our workforce 
that they were educated on things that Rebecca may need and one of the best things about Rebecca was she helped us do that. Well, when I got hired here, um, I do feel like, you know, again, there was a genuine curiosity about how I did things. I actually um, voluntarily put on a couple of um, lunch events. I made it fun. I didn't really make it about me, but I made it about, you know, people who are blind. In a restaurant, Rebecca shares lunch with a coworker. You know, one of the things, you know, they when they brought me in to offer me the job, they said, you know, what kind of technology do you need? And, you know, they've been wonderful about making sure I had the accommodations. Any of those technology things, I think, have been under a thousand dollars. Some of them spread out, so they've been very reasonable for, for, for what we do. She's improved a lot of our products at FMP, so we are often, we work with the federal government, we need to make sure anything that we submit is accessible, any kind of electronic uh, products are accessible, we're maybe designing a website for them, it needs to make sure it's accessible. She's a perfect subject matter expert there that we can do testing and make sure everything we're designing really works and we've actually kind of, I would say that's become a bit of a strength area for FMP and a lot of it is things that she's brought to us. You can measure the contributions to the business, but there is something greater when opportunity is provided. Rebecca and her guide dog exit a meeting and head to her desk. I feel good about myself because I'm getting up, going to work, doing something. And I also feel good about myself because I know I'm making a difference in other people's lives. So it's like paying it forward. Carl boards a bus on his way home. As hokey as it sounds, I want to be able to give them hope that yes, you, you actually, you really can do it. And so when I come to work every day, I feel like I'm perpetuating that and, and helping other people understand that you know, this, is, this is possible, this is doable, you can, you can get a job. Tiffany and her guide dog walk past storefronts on their way to a metro station. I have a job that I enjoy. Um, I have a family that I love dearly. I have a beautiful house. I'm so happy that I'm able to support my family and contribute and pay taxes and you know, those kinds of things, but I feel like that should be the norm. Rebecca is shown at home prior to her workday. She rocks her son who sits in a baby carrier on the dining room table. The boy looks at the camera and smiles broadly. You love laboring for it. You love getting up in the morning and trying to get kids dressed two or three attempts. You love trying to feed them. You love walking them to school. Tony is shown feeding one of his two young sons. They then begin a walk to school and daycare before Tony heads to work. You love going to work and helping people have similar experiences in their life. So, I mean, my life is very fulfilling. And, I mean, it's ironic when you think about it that the real blindness is the people perceiving people who are blind. That's the blindness. For more information about the American Council of the Blind, please visit acb.org. This video was made possible through the generosity of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company.